hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. In this screencast, I would like to illustrate or explain a spreadsheet that I uploaded yesterday to the member page of BionicTurtle.com for my FRM candidate customers. This spreadsheet illustrates an idea that we see in the Renee Stoll's readings under operational risk, and specifically, this is under enterprise risk management, the reading by Brian Nocco and Renee Stoll's. And what this spreadsheet illustrates is the idea that a firm can use a credit transition or migration matrix here at the bottom to solve for the amount of equity capital that it needs or equity cushion. So in order to explain this, I'll start here at the bottom with a an illustrative credit transition or migration matrix. I adapted this from an actual Standard & Poor's credit migration matrix. And what this tells us is that this is a single period matrix. It tells us that if a firm starts here at one of these credit ratings, for example, a single A, that these are the probabilities that the firm will migrate into another rating class during the single period. So for example, a firm that starts at single A has a 0.2% chance of being upgraded two notches from single A to triple A, a 3% chance of being upgraded a single notch to double A, and fully an 88% chance of remaining stable in the single A rating. So hopefully you can see that with a credit transition or migration matrix, the diagonal has the largest probabilities because over a single period at least, the, the highest probability is that the firm will remain stable in the rating class. So we need this as an input. And then what I would just highlight for you, because the, re the reading can be difficult, at first to understand their logic, but I would just like to highlight that there's two basic steps here. One on the left, one on the right. The one on the left is the firm decides what its attitude towards risk is. It selects a risk orientation and that implies a target probability of default. The lower the firm's risk, the lower the probability of default. The higher the firm's risk appetite, the higher the probability of default. That's the first step. Then given the probability of default, the firm can use the Merton model to reverse engineer or infer what its firm value and therefore how much equity capital it needs to meet that target probability of default. Those are the two steps. So let's just take a look at that. First, so just to illustrate, I'll assume that our firm expresses a risk attitude in the following way. It would like to fall or be downgraded to speculative or junk status with only 6% probability. So that's double B because double B or lower on the S&P scale, those are the non-investment grade or speculative or junk scales. Here's the investment grade. So the firm would like to be downgraded to double B or less, that's or less, with only 6% probability. So my spreadsheet tells me that returns an initial credit rating of A. What that means is, if we look here at the starting, at the rating that we start at, at the start of the period, single A, then there is a 2% chance the firm will be downgraded to a double B, a 1% chance to a B, a 0.8% chance to triple C, and a 2% chance to default. And so if we add those up, that happens to be about 5.8% or, or almost 6%, and that matches our risk attitude. In other words, if the firm starts the period with a credit rating equal to single A, then we can see cumulatively there are four outcomes here and about almost a 6% chance the firm could be downgraded to double B or less speculative status. And so this is the target credit rating that the firm wants. It's a single A. And if we go all the way over, we see it corresponds to targeting a probability of default equal to 
So this risk orientation implies a target probability of default of 2%. Now we can go to the second step. Here I'm just carrying over the probability of default and then using the Merton model, reverse engineering the Merton model, we need more input assumptions. Let's say the firm's debt is $10. The expected return on the firm's assets, not its equity, is 9%. The time period, again, is a single period, one-year model, keeping it simple. And the volatility of the firm's assets, not its equity, is 20%. So those are the option-like inputs in the Merton model. And I won't go into the detail on the math here, but it tells us that we want a firm or asset value of about $14 against a debt threshold of $10, and that will give us a probability of default of 2%. In other words, the firm wants $4 of equity. So without going to the math on that, I do have the diagram here. By using the Merton model, what we what we said is, the firm has $10 in debt and that's the default threshold. And we know that the volatility of the firm's assets are 20% and with the growth assumption of 9%, basically we solved for this number here. We solved for a, when we reverse engineered the Merton model, we got a result of $14 because if we put in $14 here, and grow it at 9%, we'll end up at an expected value over the one year of about $15.07. And then with a volatility of 20% on those assets, that would get us about 41% above the default threshold, which you can see 41% over 20% in standard normal units is just about two standard deviations. So by Starting with $14, we end up about two standard deviations above the default threshold, and that happens to, under a normal assumption, imply about 2% of the area under the total curve is in this tail. In other words, that implies a 2% chance that the firm could end up here below the default threshold and in default. So you see how we really started with, we want, we want a number here that gives us 2% of the area under here. That number here happens to be a firm value of $14. So that number, we started with targeting a probability of 2% and it and reverse engineering, we come back and find out that what we need for a firm value is therefore $14. We need $4 of equity cushion. $4 of equity cushion will give us a 2% probability of default, which again will meet our target risk orientation. Working backwards the other way finally, the $4 in equity implies a firm value of $14 because that means that we'll be two standard deviations above the default threshold at the end of the period with therefore a 2% probability of default. With a 2% probability of default, we need to start with an initial credit rating of A, single A, because that's the rating that if we start with, we have only a 6% chance of being downgraded to speculative status. So I hope that is a helpful walkthrough of that spreadsheet, and you can see it invokes uh, at least several concepts that we review primarily in the Rene Stoll's readings under operational risk. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.